Okay, then, looking at the actual laws, well, we're not going to look too much at too many specific national laws because uh, there's lots of differences, jurisdictional differences in there. But, um, uh, you know, we're going to look at international principles, and in that regard, we have uh, a great assistance in the European Union Privacy Directives. Now, this was not law. This was a directive saying you have to pass, uh, all the nations of the European Union have to pass individually in their own law, laws about privacy. And the laws that you pass about privacy have to contain these seven principles. And the principles were... Um, it had to be lawful. Um, any information you obtained about your customers, your clients, uh, about anybody, any information you held about them, you had to obtain lawfully. So, you know, you can go out and steal information about people. Uh, you had to buy it, you had to ask them for it, whatever. Um, purposeful. Uh, information had to be collected for a specific purpose, and it couldn't be used for a different purpose unless you got the permission of the people about whom you obtained the information. Um, the information had to be open to the subject. In other words, the subject, the individual about whom you have information, had to be able to ask you and get a report of all the information you had on them. Um, it had to be accurate and timely. In other words, um, if, you know, you couldn't keep outdated information, um, you had to update the information uh, as the information changed, you had to correct it um, so that the information had to be accurate and current at all times. Um, if you were going to disclose the subject's information to anybody else, you had to have the subject's permission. Uh, the subject had a right of correction. If you had information about them that was wrong, they uh, had the ability and you had to change it and correct it to the, the correct information. Um, and then the big one. Those are the sixth and the seventh. This is the, this is the one that really makes the European Union Privacy Directives important. Transfer, transmission of the information to another jurisdiction was forbidden unless that jurisdiction had substantially the same protections. So what this meant was any countries wanting to deal with European Union uh, customers and companies and so forth had to uh, have th the same level of privacy protection in terms of those seven principles and the seventh being very important. Uh, and so lots of countries around the world uh, brought in their own laws uh, with the European Union directives. So, um, 
you know, it, it uh, you know, it wasn't just the European Union, it was Australia, it was Japan, it was Canada, you know, so on and so forth. Lots of countries around the world. Um, I, I don't know what the, uh, the number is now. It very quickly went over a hundred countries that were basically following these directives in terms of their own privacy law, with one single and significant exception, and that is the United States. And the United States wasn't going to let anybody tell them what they could or could not do in terms of any kind of legislation. Um, and the, the Americans don't have a privacy law. Uh, they don't have any privacy laws. Well, actually, that's not true. They have a lot of privacy laws, or, or rather laws that touch on individual specific aspects of privacy. For example, they have a law that deals with privacy relating to medical information. They have a law relating to the fact that you cannot use for uh, other purposes information that you collect about children on a website aimed at children. I mean, you know, how specific do you have to get? Um, if you're going to have uh, general uh, privacy laws, you know, they, all of these little bits and pieces, uh, you know, are, yes, they're, they're okay. They, uh, you know, generally sort of fit in with those uh, uh, privacy ideas, but uh, they don't cover the, you know, the whole uh, information sphere. And, and so how many hundred laws are you going to have to have uh, before you actually sort of get a privacy law. Um, uh, so, uh, and they still don't. Now, the, the Americans do have something that the Europeans don't, and that is a disclosure law. Um, American privacy laws don't really say you've got to keep the information private. What they do say is, if you keep the information and you, it, there's a breach you've got to let the subjects know that their data has been breached. So, um, you know, that, that's sort of missing from the, the original uh, directives. Anyway, um, just be, we're going to get uh, too far into the, the weeds here. Um, but uh, that was the original European Union directives, privacy directives. Um, then along came GDPR, and it added uh, two more directives, and one uh, was very important. This was accountability. And uh, uh, the accountability part, um, it wasn't the, the directions themselves, and you didn't have to have this in the law, but it basically sort of set up some regulations that you needed to do um, to make sure that you were doing uh, privacy properly, that the seven principles were being followed properly. And interestingly enough, as I talked about when we talked about security frameworks earlier, um, there were these 135 uh, st checklist standards that always had around 135 uh, items in them. And uh, the accountability section, uh, when it was added, um, the regulations had about 135 items that you needed to check off. I just thought that was really funny.